Introduction to Neural Networks with Java, Class 10, Part 1. Welcome to Class Session 10. In this class session, we're going to learn how to predict with a neural network. Neural networks can take a series of time-based data or temporal data and attempt to find patterns in that data that might allow the neural network to predict the future. In this class session, we're just going to predict the sine wave. The sine wave is completely predictable, but the neural network doesn't know this. This is a good, simple case that allows us to learn the principles of creating a predictive neural network. In the next class session, class 11, we will see how to apply it to the financial markets and we will attempt to predict the future direction of the S&P 500 using past S&P 500 data as well as the interest rate. Of course, this is a, just an attempt to predict the S&P 500 using a couple of simple data types. To really create a serious stock market application, you would need to create far more inputs and get into much more complex analysis of the data as it comes in. But this will allow us to see the foundations of predictive neural network programming. We will begin by looking at the structure of how you create the inputs for a predictive neural network. Predictive neural networks basically attempt to predict data over a series of time. These are sometimes called temporal neural networks of relating to time. Here you see a string of numbers. This is how you need to think of the data coming into the temporal neural network. Think of the data as a stream of numbers extending chronologically over time. Now here we're looking at numbers and we're going to use these very numbers to predict as though, for example, these were a stock price and the stock was just consistently rising. You would use the previous numbers to predict the future numbers. Sometimes you'll do more than one input stream. You will say, for example, use a stock price and the current prime interest rate to predict the future trends in that stock price. We'll cover how to do that as well. You can have many inputs to predict the output. It all matters what it is dependent on. Here you see a string of numbers. Let's see exactly how we would write a neural network that would try to predict this string of numbers. The string of numbers ranges from 1 to 8. We are going to create a feed-forward neural network that will use supervised training. Since we're using supervised training, this basically comes down to how are we going to construct the training sets? How are we going to structure the inputs and outputs of the neural network? The hidden layers will be defined by whatever is necessary to actually predict it. The important part for now is deciding how many input neurons and how many output neurons we're going to have. What we do is we need to break this data into slices, time slices. And from those time slices, we are going to predict data. We need to pick how many inputs we want to use to predict it and how many outputs we want predicted. And here you see an example of this. Notice the bottom string of numbers. This is a time slice. The, the bluish colored numbers are the input neurons. The more reddish colored one is the output neuron. We have four input neurons and one output neuron for this configuration. We're going to use the first, the preceding four neurons to predict, to provide input to predict the fifth one. So we will break the neural network up into a series of time slices that match this configuration. This will provide the training data for the neural network. Then when we want to predict something, we just feed in the previous four time slices to the current date, and it should predict the fifth time value. This is how the neural network will be constructed. Now let's see how the training sets would actually be constructed for such a thing. Here you see at the very top the same 1 through 8 numeric sequence. The, next, the first training set data that you see there is the one that we just looked at. We are using 1 through 4 to predict the fifth one. Then we're using 2 through 5 to predict the sixth one. We are basically just constructing the 
the training sets to match the data. We always want to keep it the same size because we have to use the same numbers of training sets. We're training with a total of three of these. Now you may not want them to always butt right up to each other like that, going one and then the next and then the next. You may want some sp space between these because in real world data you're going to have a lot more than just four possible values that you can create training data for. Usually you cannot just use one source of data to predict itself. For example, if you have the historic prices of IBM over many years, this is not enough information most likely to predict the future stock prices of IBM. IBM does not operate in a vacuum. There's other things going on. What are those other things? That's part of the trick of figuring out how to create a reasonably accurate predictive neural network. But how would we represent more than one variable? Here we see a numeric sequence and the second one, P1, P2, P3, that's the prime interest rate. You basically mix them into the input neurons. You see the first numeric value, then prime one, so you end up with eight input neurons four for the data, and four for the interest rate. Now we still have just one output neuron because we're trying to predict the prime, we're not trying to predict the prime interest rate, we're just trying to predict that numeric sequence. Usually you don't want to try to predict two things. You just want to predict one. Whatever you're trying to predict, that is what needs to go into the output neurons. That's the basics of how to create a predictive neural network. There's more to it than just this. The real trick is figuring out what is going to go in for the inputs, how many input data items you want to use to predict, and you may also want to predict more than just simply the next value. If you want to predict more values into the future, you simply create additional output neurons. Also sampling the data that you're provided with is important. Do you literally want to predict based on every single day like we just saw there? Most likely you want your data to range over time, so you might want to predict every week or it really depends on how much data you actually have. We'll see an example of this in the next class session when we try to apply this to the S&P 500. We'll attempt to predict the S&P 500 based on the prime interest rate and past performance of the S&P. This concludes part one. In the next part, we will see how to actually implement a predictive neural network. We hope you will continue with part two. Thank you. This course is based on our Introduction to Neural Network Programming books for Java and also Introduction to Neural Networks for C Sharp. Available in both paperback and ebook format.